All right, everyone, welcome back. I appreciate y'all being here today. Um, hopefully the video that I have for us today is a good one. It's an American's point of view, the truth about living in Germany. This is something I might be able to relate to a little bit more just because he obviously was born here in the U.S. and now he's living over there. So I'm very curious to see what he has to say. So without further ado, let's just hop into the video. So when I landed in Germany, I remember the first thing that was kind of a shock was hopping on a train. I had never been on a train. Now it seems really normal, but I hopped on a train, went through the beautiful countrysides of Germany down to a little city called Marana. And I remember being kind of shocked at how small it was and that we had a car. And then there were little tiny things. I've only been on one, two, two technical trains, but they were subways. They weren't even like actual trains. You know, I can't experience the outside, so that were shocking yeah, that's to me. Yeah, something I don't do. I mean, just for the fun of saying what they were, there was like a light switch. They're not light switches, they're kind of like light pads. So you hit a whole entire pad. Or the pillows, they're not rectangle, they're squares. And they're windows, they don't open up and down or side to side, they tip in and out. Hmm. And they open kind of like a door. So there's, there's a lot of little differences like that. They have, I mean, our apartment had our washer and dryer in the kitchen. And then I, I thought that was just our apartment. And then I realized a lot of, a lot of apartments are like that. So. I've heard that. I've heard that, that a lot of Europe in general has, you know, their washer and dryer, sometimes just the washer, you know, sometimes they don't have a dryer um, or it's like an all in one unit. I've heard that a lot of times they are in the kitchen where we have a, a separate room. Those for are little it. tiny things, but nothing big. My favorite food in Germany is just schnitzel and rotkohl. Rotkohl is just red cabbage. Okay. And they would have plusa, so that's basically it's. It looks like a potato, but it's but it's not. It's just a dumpling. I guess that's what it is in English. Okay. And uh, sounds good. <laughs> and that was my favorite. Was when we just had schnitzel, rotkohl, and plusa. Um, I also really liked the laden, which was just meat rolled up in, and they'd have they'd marinate it, and it just tasted really good. I like their meat. Simply said. <laughs> I really learned to like red cabbage, which I disliked. I also liked uh, sauerkraut. Didn't like that mm. either. So. so we're coming up on New Year's here. It's going to be in a couple of days, and we have a tradition. I think a lot of Americans do. I'm not sure, but we have a tradition where we always eat um, little pork chops just smothered in sauerkraut in a, in a crock pot for hours, and it's just so tender, and it's so good. I love sauerkraut. I absolutely love it. So it's one of my favorites. So I can see why. He would learn to like it because it is, it does have an acquired taste, but man, it's so good. But by the end, I pretty much liked anything they put in front of me. <laughs> the weather in Germany is similar to here in Utah. I mean, the hots are a little bit hotter and the colds are a little bit colder due to the humidity. I really like their traditions that revolve around music and the traditions that revolve around Christmas. Okay. They start Christmas the be at the very beginning of December and they have the Advent site, which is the time of the advent and they have these advent calendars and they have advent wreaths so basically, like, and they the celebrate each Sunday prior out. to the Christmas morning. And that's a tradition that I would want to hold up for the rest of my life with my family. And another tradition that I found interesting was on, they open their uh, gifts on Christmas Eve, which was okay. interesting to me. I always thought you do it Christmas morning, but Germans are a little bit different that way. I think it depends on how big your family is. Like, my family is absolutely massive. So sometimes we do you know, a couple of days early. Sometimes we would do it on Christmas Eve or we would go to my great grandparents' and do a Christmas Eve, do one Christmas morning, one Christmas night. It's a mess sometimes. Let's see, another cultural thing about Germany is uh, the public transportation. So you don't see as many uh, cars in cities and the roads aren't very wide because they, uh, they all take public transportation. It was interesting because I spent majority on the east side, which is where, which was under communist rule, where the DDR was these last, uh, not too long ago. And so we met a lot of people who were communists. I never thought that I would re would become friends with a bunch of communists. Uh, it just never crossed my mind as an American, but it ended up being wonderful. I mm -hmm. had a lot of friends that had a lot of different political views that I had never really viewed before. I learned to respect other people's opinions a lot more, to not be so hasty to judging. Yeah. And I realized that the ideals of communism can be appealing. I mean, maybe I shouldn't categorize them all as communists. A lot of them were just socialists and had more of those communistic ideals. But 
it was still an eye opener to me when I sure, sure, when sure. I started making friends with people with a. At the end of the day, they're just people. You know what I mean? Everybody, everybody's got their own thoughts and beliefs, and I don't judge anybody on their thoughts and beliefs. I might not agree with everything, but at the end of the day, you're a human being. You know what I mean? They're political perspectives. If you're wanting to learn German, the key to speaking any language, I think, is just speaking it constantly, and you can do it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think I was going to be able to learn a language, but... I got a lot of support from my siblings who would write me letters saying, oh, you can try something more like this, try something like that. For example, my sister, she plays the piano, so she kept telling me to continue to study and memorize the charts of the German language, which tell you der, die, and das, so the masculine, feminine, and neuter cases, and when it's going to be nominative, dative, genitive, um, things like that. And you memorize these endings, and she compared those to a scale like when you're learning the piano. So she said, just keep memorizing those. Huh. And that proved to be Interesting. really beneficial. Interesting. Um, also, in learning the... I've thought about taking up another language. I don't know which one I want to dive into um, because, you know, I, I, would like to, I would like to learn more. And, and uh, I have thought about German. I've thought about Italian. Um, I've thought about doing French. Um, I kind of did a little bit of Spanish in school, but I've really thought about German. Man, it is so intimidating. <laughs> learning German, the first thing, I mean, I learned is was bedeutet. So what does this word mean? So you'd say was bedeutet uh, house, and then they'd say in English house, you know? So that makes it so you can continue a conversation just by asking somebody, uh, what is what does that word mean? And then they can answer that. And then the second sentence I learned was uh, wie sagt man? Wie sagt man means uh, what does, how do you say uh, tree. So, wie sagt man tree, and then they'd say Baum. So, those two sentences were the first things I learned in German. And then from there, if you're stranded on the street you and you have to speak, you can always struggle to put a sentence together. But really, in the end, learning the language wasn't the issue. After about four months, it was no longer an issue. I mean, I just woke up, studied the language, and it just came pretty naturally well that was definitely that was sure. definitely a uh, um, an interesting watch and to be honest with you I kind of expected some of it you know, I was expecting public transportation the food I, I, everything I see on Germany's food just sounds absolutely incredible but I think it ties into the fact that a lot of what Germany eats we have renditions here not only in the US but within my family that we eat so that the German food doesn't shock me too much you know public transport the beautiful views um, that was a good video. I enjoyed that one tremendously. And see, I like that kind of stuff because it gives me in a perspective that I can relate to a little bit more being, you know, he's from the U.S., I'm from the U.S. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, leave a like if you haven't already. Consider commenting and telling me, you know, some other things that I might be able to relate to a little bit better. Um, and, you know, just and what your thoughts are, what, you know, I, I don't know how long he was there. I kind of wish I'd have got an idea or he could have said, you know, how long he was here or there, I'm sorry. Um... But yeah, like the video if you haven't already. Consider sharing it to all your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's free for you. It helps me out tremendously. Um, but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, we'll have a next have a good day.